Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome to this Monday, Monday afternoon. It's not morning and I do apologize. I'm just now getting here uh, to you uh, on this 20th day of March to go over our daily devotion. I pray that you all have had a blessed day so far. <laughs> Amen. I pray you've already had your morning break, your your lunch break, and maybe you have some time either for your evening break or on your way home and you listen to the daily devotions that I usually upload on on YouTube. So welcome Facebook family. Uh, so happy to be back with you today. Today we're going to be talking about a mighty fortress. A mighty fortress. You know, sometimes we, you know, we get caught up in, in, in you know, we should always want to help people and, and do uh, our best to, you know, if, a, if we see a person in need, you know, the Bible tells us to, you know, um, do unto others as we would like or have them do unto us. And so a lot of times, you know, we will see a person in need and, and you know, we, we get caught up in helping them. But today we want to talk about how, you know, a need doesn't necessarily, uh, someone else's need, I'll put it like this, doesn't necessarily uh, 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 constitute, you know, it being a call or a ministry for you. So, so you have to uh, know your purpose, know what you're called to, amen, and not get caught up in someone else's drama. You know, that need just may be while you're passing through uh, or while they're passing through. But let's, amen, stay focused on the, the call and the purpose. And so here we see in Daniel, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> First Samuel, the 23rd chapter and the 17th verse. And it reads, and he said unto them, fear not for the hand of of Saul, my father, shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king. So here we have David's friend, Jonathan, which happens to be Saul's son, uh, is in a position where he can aid David, okay? And so, uh, and so we have a, a city uh, that is, uh, uh, that, that David was on his way to, Kekila, uh is spelled um, K-E-I-L-A-H, uh, Kila. In the Hebrew, it is Kila, uh, Kela, I believe, K-E-H-E-E-L-A-W. And it means fortress. It's a city in the lowlands, okay. So sometimes you may feel like you know you, you're you're in a, a a place because fortress also means stronghold, and you may feel like you're in a stronghold, amen. That's that that's at the bottom of the bottom, you know. Uh, but let me tell you, God always has a way for escape because a fortress and a stronghold is also a place to to help you to safeguard you against attacks. That's what fortresses were. They were a place to help against the enemy's attacks. And so um and so in this chapter we see that David is still on the run from Saul. Poor David. He comes upon a city called Kila and the city is currently under attack uh from the Philistines, okay? So it is under attack uh, the Philistines were raiding the threshing floor, and and they were raiding the grain uh, in in the in the town of Kila. And David inquired of the Lord as to whether or not he and his men should go there and get involved. That's the first thing I'm going to tell you. You know, when you come across a person in need, because you don't know. Uh, the will of God concerning them, the first thing you need to do is inquire so that you can learn and, and get to know if that's something God wants you to get tangled up in. Amen. That's the first thing you need to do. So this is what David did. He inquired of the Lord as to whether or not he and his men should even go there. Okay. And then, and then the Lord answered him and said, arise and go to Keilah. And he will deliver the Philistines into your hand. So this is what the Lord, this is the answer God gave him when he inquired. What I like about this story is that after God helped 
them to strike down the Philistines. You know, God told him to go, that he was going to help him. So David had God's assurance. He had God's assurance. And after God helped him and, and they struck down the Philistines, they had great victory over there. You know, he did not get lifted up in pride as so many times we do when God has given us success. Our God has given us a great victory. The first thing you know, we as, as, as humans and as, as people, you know, because flesh is a mess. Flesh always want to get, want to take the credit. We get lifted up in pride. Okay. What I like about this, David didn't do that. David recognized that the need of him being there did not necessarily constitute a call to a particular ministry, you know. And many times we make that mistake, you know. God, uh, you know, God has us on a journey, and we're traveling through. Not not to pitch a tent and stay. We're traveling through, and we get so caught up in the need of what's going on with the other person until we start. Make, you know, we we make it a ministry. We make it all about us, and 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 oh, you know, this must be what God want me to do, and oh, this is my ministry, and and you know. <laughs> we just get so caught up. There are many people that I know that got, got caught up in a marriage because they didn't realize that the person that, that God had introduced them to, it was for them to pray for them because that they was to help that person along for the, for, for the moment, for the period, for the time. And they got caught up in something and they thought, oh, well, this must be what I'm called to. This is my husband. This is my ministry. Uh -uh. You need to inquire of the Lord. Make sure you don't confuse the two. Okay. And so David didn't get lifted up in pride. You know, he didn't, you know, try to stay there and, and take on a city. And, and then, of course, now be the king of that city or whatever the case may be, because he helped them win the victory with the Philistines. He, 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 uh, he heard that Saul was going to be coming after him because Saul had got, gotten wind that David was there. The messenger had let Saul know that, you know, David has went to this city. So, uh, you know, the information got back to David that Saul was on his way. So David inquired, okay, he inquired of God after the help as to what to do next. He inquired and, and God told him, okay, he told him that Saul was coming. So before I get into that, I just want I just want to let you know that when we see a need and when we ask God what we should do, he may tell us to help. But we got to make sure we inquire after we've been successful in helping what next. Okay, we got to inquire of God what next. Whether we should stay or whether we should go. Because most often time, you know, we stay much too, too, much longer than we need to. And what happens when we do that is we create unnecessary warfare that for ourselves that God never intended for us to get involved in. Okay, so we, we must inquire. So when David heard, like I said, that Saul was coming for him, okay, he inquired of God. Uh, you know, God, is this true? You know, I, I, a messenger came and said, Saul is on his way here. And God told him, yes, it is true. Saul is coming. And so uh, and so then he heard, you know, that that uh, the people that in the city of Keilah was going to deliver them up to Saul. You know, and I don't blame them for their safety. You know, hey, give them up. So he heard, you know, that they were going to be delivering him and his men over to Saul. And so he inquired of God, is that true? And God, here again, informs him, yes. That is true. <laughs> okay. So David, you know, uh, he, he got gathered his men, his 600 men. He gathered his men and they, de they departed. They departed. So that was good. Because when Saul heard that David had escaped, guess what he did? He halted his journey. He halted his trip to Keilah and, and decided to turn around. And I'm sure that just by David inquiring of the Lord, like I wish he had a did when he went into the city of Nob. Because if you remember, he went into that city and he deceived Ahimelech, uh, the priest. And Saul went there and killed up every, everything in, this, in the city, even the cattle. <laughs> he just, you know. And I'm sure had he made it to Keilah and, and inquired or whatever, he would have did some damage there as well. So, <laughs> what I want you to see in this, this devotion today is that 
David seemed like he was always on the run until, you know, God got ready to deliver him. He was, he was on the run from Saul, you know, and, and, and tomorrow we're going to be talking about God's escape plan because you're going to see how when Saul was almost to catch up with him, God had a way out. But what I want you to get from this devotion today is that God is our only fortress, okay? God is our only fortress. God always have a ram in the bush. And this ram happens to be named Jonathan. <laughs> this was David's friend, Saul's son. <laughs> yeah, Saul's son who was helping David. And he said unto him, fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you here. And thou shalt be a king. So he's even, uh, he's even, uh, um, he's even agreeing and even seeing where his, his, you know, his days with his father being in kingship is, is over. And he sees the anointing and he sees the appointing that has been appointed to David to be king. And, and, you know, that takes some, some insight because by legal, you know, Saul king, Jonathan his son, Jonathan should have been. But even Jonathan recognized that God has his, had, had his hand on David. And so he su submitted to him. God will use your enemy's family if he has to to make a way for you. Let me say that again. God will use your enemy's family and friends to come around the backside to get word to you to help you out for a plan of escape. If God, if God be for you, as they say, who can be against you? I'm talking about a mighty fortress. You know, there is no safe place outside of God. There is no place that can hide you outside of God. He is in this day and age and, and, and has always been our only help. Jesus Christ is our redeemer. He's our savior and God sent his son to do just that. So he is our mighty fortress. You might have your guns. You may have your money. You may have whatever you think you can buy to 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 safe and have a security system for you. But let me tell you, God is our only fortress. And so with that being said, amen, I just want you to take comfort in that, knowing, amen. It, there's so many good stories in the Bible that, that teaches us how we are not to fear. Remembering this devotion is dealing with how to overcome your fears in this day and age. And so here David was on the run for his life. Amen. He had been called and appointed to be king. And he didn't get caught up in the need of Keilah, even though they, they had a need. And, and he, you know, as he was passing through, God used him. God can use you to fit the need for a period. But what I'm saying is, if that's not your purpose, don't get caught up in the need. You need to let God use you and move on, honey. Everybody that's called in your life or that crosses your path is not always meant to stay. You need to know your purpose and your call. So with that being said, amen. I, I, Father God, we just thank you for this day. We, 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 we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for just being who you are. A loving God, a kind God, a God who looks out for us. We love you for, for, for being our strength, our strength in the time. Our strength in the time, God, when we're weak. We thank you for being our rock and our fortress and our deliverer in whom we will trust. We can only trust in you, God. We will call upon you, oh God, because there is no other like you and because you are worthy and you are worthy to be praised no matter what we face in this life. We thank you, God, for shielding us and protecting us for protecting our families and everyone and everything that is associated and tied to us. We thank you, God, for protecting us. 
And we give you all of the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And so I just want to thank you today. Amen. Please remember to subscribe. This is Lady O here saying I love you on this beautiful chilly day. It's chilly here in Florida. And I tell you, I wanted to sleep in this morning, but that didn't happen. So, <laughs> so I just thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, share, and like. And hello to my friends in Kenya. Amen. I hope to see you soon on our Zoom meets that we usually have. Amen. And and uh, I just, just love you guys so much today. And I just pray that you have a blessed rest of the day. Amen. Mwah. Smooches.